changes. Hey, welcome everybody to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we're gonna to talk about inventory tracking for your eBay, your Amazon, your Poshmark, your Etsy, wherever you sell at, even if it's direct or on your own website or Shopify, how to track your inventory, how to track what you've spent on your inventory, how to track what the cost of goods sold is and what that difference is, cost of goods sold versus your inventory in hand cost and how to keep track of what those numbers will be for your taxes for your quarterly or your end of year. Uh, today is Saturday, June 27th, 2020 for reference. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. I'm gonna show you guys three ways to track your inventory. It is totally up to you how you choose to do it. All three of these methods are correct and can be done for your tax purposes and the IRS. I'm gonna show you over on my computer because it'll be easiest for me to show you, slash on my iPad, so totally up to you guys again how you will do this. But just know, however you decide to do this, once you pick a method, you really have to stick with that method and changing to another method is really, really difficult. Also, I am not a CPA, I'm not licensed. I cannot give you financial or legal advice. Please consult a CPA if you don't understand this video, if you have no idea what you're doing, all of those good things, please always consult a CPA. This is simply my experiences and how I do things and some of the other methods that I've either seen or that I have done maybe in the past and decided to go to a different method. Um, I can tell you personally, I did go from one method to another. Really, really hard to change. Okay, with that said, let's talk about before we go over to my computer, two things, cost of goods sold and cost of goods slash cost of inventory. So when you buy a piece of merchandise, let's say, and actually it's perfect because I just bought a box from one of my viewers that just arrived here. You guys can see this is kind of like one of those uh, large flat rate boxes. I bought another box of ties. Yes, I did. Um, the top one is a Versace tie. Very nice Versace tie. Uh, I think there's about 60 ties in here. And I think I paid like 60 or 70 bucks to get it delivered. I'd have to check. Anyways, this is now a cost of goods, cost of inventory, because it's now in my physical stock. Let's say I paid $60 for this. I'm making that number up. But let's say there's 60 ties and I paid $60 for the box delivered. I paid a dollar a tie. It's really easy math, right? So I now have $60 worth of inventory. That is what I paid in my inventory. It doesn't matter what I think I'll sell it for, if it's worth $300 or $400. What I paid is my inventory cost, cost of goods, cost of inventory, $60. Let's say tomorrow I sell this tie for 50 bucks, right? Let's just say it's a really good Versace tie. Somebody gives me 50 bucks for it. Perfect. There's that Gianni Versace uh, tag right there. So now that I've sold this, it is no longer it's no longer in my inventory, it's gone. It ships out to a customer. Well, we know this cost, since we do easy math, is a dollar, right? It's $1. So now my cost of goods sold is $1. My cost of inventory remaining is $59. Does that make sense to everybody? Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. Now, that is kind of one way that a lot of people ask me to track goods and track things. At the end of the year, the IRS is going to ask you, how much were your cost of goods sold? And you'll need to give them that number. And then they're gonna ask you how much inventory you have left over, how much going forward. That is that number. When you do your taxes the next year, they will ask you how much inventory did you start the year with? I started the year with $59. That was my only sale. Dollar cost of goods sold, $59 at the end of last year. Going forward, my inventory is $59. That is the questions that you need and why it's so important to track your inventory and your cost of goods. Now, let me show you the three ways that you can keep track is box after box or bag after bag from the Goodwill or whatever it is that you buy comes in, how you can make sure that you always know what something costs, how much to assign to the cost of goods sold and how much to do in your remaining inventory. Also, I want you guys to use the comment section to tell me what method do you use? A lot of you have heard of this cash versus accrual. That's not really the routes that I'm going. It's cash uh, accounting is what I do. I'm gonna show you inventory tracking. That's different from accounting. We're talking about inventory tracking right now. It is a part of accounting, but this is simply inventory tracking. 
So I want you to use the comments below and tell me what method you use or have used, or if you're not using a method yet, which is not good, but we'll, we'll get you there. And also I want you guys to tell me if you would be interested in a program or an app or a software or an extension or something that's built that will allow you to easily keep track of what you still have in stock, what you sold, potentially a SKU number or a serial number if you track it, and what you paid for it and when you bought it. Program that would handle all of it, no matter what platforms you sell on, it'll cover all your platforms, or at least most of them. And let me know if you'd be interested, if that would be something that you guys would be willing to you know, invest some money in, because let's be honest, that's a very important thing. And QuickBooks and GoDaddy really don't do it well. They don't really have an inventory management system. There are some third parties, I've heard of, of a few. They're okay, they're not great. I don't have experience with all of them. Perhaps some of you have some experience with some. Again, recommend it below. But I am working on something. Okay, I'm not working on something because I'm not a coder or programmer. I have some folks working on something that may potentially be available later this year or uh, next year for inventory management and tracking uh, procedures. So let's go over to my computer, check out the three ways, and I'll leave you guys uh, with that to go on your own in the comments section after we look at my computer. I'll see you over there in just a second. All right, so just real quick, brought up a Google's uh, doc sheet here, and you can start off by using method number one, which is what we just talked about, tracking each individual item. So as I said before, you go to the store and you buy some items. Let's say you do it on July 1st, because July is coming up really quick, and you always wanna track your store. Let's say you go into the Goodwill, right? And let's say that you buy 20 items and you spend 20 bucks. We'll make it really easy. They're a dollar a piece. And then you want to add the item and then you want to add the price paid, right? Okay. So we went to the Goodwill and we bought, let's just say we bought 20 items. So we're just going to scroll on down here, make sure that we've got it all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through to the 23rd spot would be 20. And we bought all of them at the Goodwill. And actually we want to add another line here. And let's say that you are a big dress shopper and you bought some dresses. Well, what you would have to do is you'd have to put that they were a gap dress, red, extra large. And you would have to kind of describe these items and then give them a SKU number. This is gonna be what you would add to eBay or Poshmark. It's what you're gonna put on your bin. Let's say that you assign this A101 and then A102 and you do that all the way down the list again you can just you know click and drag if you don't know how to use excel then study up there are some free um, videos on youtube and then you would just fill all these out as you know like uh this could be an american whoops american eagle dress green small whatever it's going to be right so you'd fill all these out blah, blah 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 all this would be filled out now we know that you paid a buck a piece let's say you paid two bucks a piece right Let's say that you paid $40 for all of these, okay? Whoops. Now, of course, we wanna have this totaled up. And so now we have $40. This is our inventory price paid. So we wanna call that inventory cost, price paid inventory, right? Now, when that item sells, you would have cost of goods sold. So let's say in a couple of days, let's say you got it all home, you got it all listed the next day, and a couple of days later, you sell the red dress, this gap dress. Well, now it's no longer a price paid inventory. It's now a cost of goods sold, and it's $0 in inventory. And so now you have $38 inventory and $2 cost of goods sold. That is pretty much how easy that would be. You would write and track down every number. When you sell it as you're creating your sales sheet or inputting it into QuickBooks or GoDaddy as a sale, you just have to remember to come over here and delete the cost of inventory and you would be able to input it into cost of goods sold. Now, the reason that it's so important to have SKU numbers is because what happens when you've bought hundreds and hundreds of items and you have multiple red dresses from Gap, so maybe they're both the same size, but they have different styles or designs, you want to know exactly which one to change out, what you paid for it. Let's say you're going through your eBay and you see a month from now that you still have A102 listed. You can come back and say, oh, I paid $2 for this 
and uh, it's just been sitting. It's been sitting and sitting. I need to go ahead and run a sale on it. I've got it at 40. I can. I only paid two bucks. I could drop this down to 20 and still get it out the door and make a couple of bucks. So that is, this is called item by item tracking. This is how you would do it. Now, the problem is if you're buying a lot of stuff like I do, this takes a whole lot of time to do. You can see how much time this would take to fill out every single item and go back. Okay, so what is the second option? So let's go ahead and clear all this and let's go ahead and add the date. Now this option is called cost averaging. So let's say again, it's July 1st and you went to the Goodwill, all right? So we're gonna do the store and then we're gonna go over to the third column and we're gonna do uh, the SKU, which is not gonna be important this time because we don't need a SKU. Why? We're not tracking each item. Okay, so we're gonna put number of items purchased, okay? Number of items purchased. And then we're gonna put price paid. Now let me show you what happens. So we're gonna total this up at the top. We went into Goodwill and we bought 40, or we bought 20 items, I'm sorry. And we paid $40 for those items, right? So we're gonna go ahead and sum total this one. So we bought 20 items for $40 and we're gonna put average cost of goods. We're going to take the price paid, divide it by the number of items. And we now have an average cost of goods of $2. So tomorrow we're gonna to go to the Salvation Army and we're gonna buy four items cause they didn't have a lot. And we paid up $20 for those items. So we paid five bucks a piece. And we have now bought, brought our average cost of goods up to $2.50. And the following day, we're gonna go to the bins and we're gonna buy 80 items and we're gonna spend $130. And so you can actually sum each particular line so you can see kind of what you're spending money on here. Oops, let's go ahead and get rid of this, okay. So we can see that we paid $1.63 an item at the bins, we paid five bucks an item at Salvation Army, we paid two bucks at Goodwill, and I go ahead and always make everything two digits. Our average cost of goods is now $1.83. We've bought 104 items, we've paid $190 and $1.83. Now, at the end of the year, what you will need to do, let's say that we sold 60 items, right? We sold 60 items, and so we're gonna break out our calculator. So we're gonna say number of items sold, 60. And then this is gonna be cost of goods sold. And that's simply going to be the sum of the number of items you sold multiplied by the average cost of goods. Again, you can two digit that, $109.62 of our 190. And then we have cost of inventory left over. Okay, this is what you have left at the end of the year. And that's a very easy number. It's the sum of everything you paid minus the amount of the cost of goods sold is $80.38. Hopefully everybody understands that. They get it. That makes sense. That is called cost averaging. Okay, so you have to keep track of the number of items you purchased. What you've paid gives you an average cost of goods and then multiply it times the number that you sold to get your cost of goods sold and whatever's left over is your cost of inventory left over. That is method number two, cost averaging. Method number three works slightly different. Let's go with method number three. Again, we're gonna have the date and we're gonna go out on July 1st. We're gonna do the same thing at the Goodwill. This is our store. We're gonna go to the Goodwill and items purchased it doesn't matter you can just put mixed clothing it doesn't even matter you don't even need that column you can just put price paid okay and let's say that we spent forty dollars okay now we're gonna go ahead and total the year up so then the next day we're gonna go back to salvation army we're gonna buy some shoes and clothes we're gonna spend eighty dollars and then on the third, whoa, seven, two, 22. On the third, we're gonna buy some stuff from the bins, mixed everything, whatever. We're gonna spend $105 at the bins. We have spent $225 for the year, right? This is our total 
price paid. Whoa, go back. What do I keep clicking? Price paid, cost of inventory, okay? Now, let's pretend like we did all this in three days, and now we're gonna get to selling our stuff, right? Well, whenever you sell an item, you are going to assign a cost of goods sold to that item. So let's say, let's say, let's go back here and let's do, uh, let's say that we put the number of items purchased. Let's say that we bought 10 here and we bought 20 or 30 here and we bought 50 here, right? So we have purchased in these three shops, we have purchased, a total of 90 items. And let's say a week later, we sell 10 of those items, right? Number of items sold, all right? And let's just say sale item. So we would put, we sold a dress, we sold some shoes, we sold a shirt. So we sold one item, one item, one item. And then over here, cost of, cost of, or price of sale, oops, excuse me. And cost of goods sold, remaining inventory. Okay. So we sold a dress. Let's say we sold it for $20, right? After fees and shipping, let's say it's $15. Let's say that's what we have left after the fees and shipping. So I'm going to assign a cost of goods sold to $10, right? Scroll down. And that leaves me a remaining inventory. Of course, the remaining inventory, I can't spell it, remaining inventory is always the sum of what you've paid minus your cost of goods sold, 215. Now I sold some shoes for 80 bucks and after fees and shipping, I was left with 61. So I'm gonna assign those a $40 cost of goods sold, right? And then I sold a shirt for $30, which left me 20. I'm gonna assign that one, uh, I'm left with 20. So I'm gonna assign this one a $5 cost of goods sold. So as you can see, I am taking as much as I feel comfortable from the price I've paid and assigning it to each item as I sell it. And the idea is, as I get down these items and I sell three more dresses the next day that somebody gives me 25 bucks a piece for, and after the fees and shipping, I get 16 per dress, I assign all of them eight, eight, and eight, I will slowly chip away. Now I have a number of items purchased, right, at 90. So I know that in eight items, I've already accounted for almost $80 in cost of goods sold. So eventually I will get down to where I'm selling an item down here that sold for a net 15 or 16 and it has like a dollar cost of goods. And so that is how you would assign this. Now what happens is at the end of the year, your cost of goods sold will be the exact same number as your inventory. And your remaining inventory will be zero. So whatever you spend for the year, this entire amount that you've spent is going to be your cost of goods sold number. You don't even need this sheet. You just know, take all your receipts, total them up $225. That's my cost of goods sold. And my inventory going forward is zero. And you continually do that every single year carrying forward. Always. Now, why? Why can I take all the amount I paid and have zero in the inventory? Well, because that means all that inventory that's zero going forward in the following year will have zero cost. If you were to sell it and do nothing else, the IRS is going to get taxes on that full amount because now you sold a $30 item with zero cost instead of a $30 item with 10 cost or 15 cost. This is the method I don't recommend for most people because they don't understand it. It looks complicated. It's actually the easiest. It actually is the easiest um, method to do. And that's why I recommend it. Okay, so there's your three methods. That is uh, accounting 101, inventory 101, tracking. Uh, if you don't understand it, ask questions below. Also comment on what you have below, what you use, how you like it, what you do, all that good stuff. I'm gonna leave you guys with this uh, screenshot, this sheet. You can rewind the video. You can ask questions, like I said. And if there's any problems, please seek out a CPA. All right, guys, enjoy your weekend. Have a wonderful rest of the Saturday and Sunday, and I will see you again tomorrow.